Thank you all for coming and having me back to your classroom. I really have a great time coming here every year, kind of like helping out in this class. Um, so I'm Glenn. I work at Autodesk in the education group. My focus is on AEC, so it's buildings and all aspects, architecture, the engineering, and constructing them. Um, I do that for Autodesk, working with a lot of students and faculty at universities just all around the country, even around the world. And my home base is actually, no, what do I say? It's, it's at other university up north located in Palo Alto, California. Maybe we'll let it go nameless right now. But I teach in the Department of Civil Engineering there, uh, teaching sort of a course very similar to this. So that's why I enjoy coming down and collaborating so much kind of on this uh, whole endeavor. So, we have some really kind of uh, hopefully fun things to do today in terms of helping you get set up that will be very useful to you, you know, as you go and head launch on as teams approaching this whole project. We're going to show you some tricks for really how to set up the files for a team and kind of use the features of the tools most effectively to support the way you're going to collaborate. And part of this is, is we're going to be offering you different alternatives about how you might approach this. And we should sort of talk about it as teams in terms of how each different team wants to approach it, because there's, there's no one right solution that every team will use based on your individual strengths and where you're located and how it makes sense for you to work together. And every team may come up with a slightly different um, solution and that's actually okay and it's part of what we're looking at in this exactly. whole class is and really yeah. each team has their own constraints one team has a member living in San Diego the other team member in another team is missing so we'll talk about your difficulties and what's the best way to set up your collaboration today okay Yiddy. So, one thing again, and what I don't want you is get together in front of one computer and just model the building. There's, there's much more effective ways to do it. Sorry, I apologize if I repeat myself. Oh, over it's, over it's important to keep on yes. talking about it. No, and like I reinforce that message. So we'll start by showing you some different ways and we'll play around with those together in terms of we're working with models in different ways. But then for the latter part of class, we're really going to look at your building and specifically how I might recommend approaching getting started on the whole process just to kind of get you kick-started so that between now and next week you'll have a chance to kind of build on top of that and exercise your skills and all that good stuff. Okay. You'll probably, you probably figured out already, I'm a pretty informal, very interactive kind of person so at any point like raise your hand, smile, wave, whatever it is to kind of like get the attention of myself or the TAs or Birch or just whatever you need. Yeah, it's all about getting what you need out of the class. So make sure like slow us down and kind of ask things and stuff like that. They're not shy. That is good. They have many questions. If you're not shy, I'm not shy. <laughs> we're all going to get along well together that way. So that'll work good or well. I should, I should speak properly since we're being recorded. Okay, to start with, we are going to try and get on a file server, which sometimes is one of the hardest parts of what we do here together, um, to all be able to access and share a space on the network together where I've uploaded some files, and we're going to kind of share some files there together amongst us, ourselves. Okay. They need to map a drive and check off using other credentials. Okay, here's what we got to do. Go ahead and get on the machine so you're kind of hanging out in Windows Explorer or something like that. What we want to do is we want to do some mapping of another drive. So go ahead and open up some window that looks like, oh, just the C window or something like that. Just somewhere out there on your computer. Actually, the computer window is a great place to be. If you just open my computer and you're looking at that window, you will see that up in the title bar, up in the menu bar, there's this thing called Map Network Drive. And that's a way we can connect other network volumes and do it in a way that'll let us put in other credentials besides the ones that you normally log in. And that's what we need. We need to go through and uh, get the connectivity that way. So click that and see if you can get to this window. It's going to say Map Network Drive. Now, so we're all in the same place. How about this? Go ahead and choose from that the T drive. OK, just a number or a letter. There's really nothing special about that. And we're going to now type in this information. We're going to go ahead and put that in. But what we're going to do is actually say, connect using different credentials. That's the part that will actually force it to ask us for the username and password. And that's what we need. So if we can actually get this right, it is class sftp dot vlab, VLAB dot usc dot edu. Slash. And now this is the one where you actually need the whole AutoCAD. So temp AutoCAD. Okay. Again, if you have this connect using different credentials, hopefully what's going to happen is it's going to ask you to enter some login credentials. 
So when we say finish that, it'll give us this enter your network name and password. For this, just go ahead and put in temp AutoCAD. I took out that VLAB because it actually, well, actually, in this case, I think it's going to have to be. Which domain? Yes, for you, 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 you take out VLAB. For yeah. instructor computer, you have it. Yeah, if the domain says VLAB, okay, beautiful, you're good. I have to go ahead and put it in because I'm not part of that domain. And this is more networking hoo-ha than you ever really want to know about. But that's what's going on here. So I have to go through and put in VLAB and put in temp AutoCAD. You don't need to put in VLAB. Temp ACAB. Correct. Okay. Oh, that's so bad because it's like I'm, I'm hardwired to say that. And then spring 2014 dollar sign. And with any luck, you should get a T drive that looks like this. Okay, so let's get what you all the same place. <laughs> okay, so as we are, uh, if people are restarting, let me go and I'm going to open up this model and take a look at it. But don't worry, you can catch up with us in just a second in terms of what's going on. So I'm going to go out there to that T drive, get that architectural model. Let's see if I can open it up. Do you want to restart the recording? Nah, it's OK. okay. I'll, I'll just edit that up. Okay, I'm just going to say continue to open the file. Let me tell you what's going on. It's because we're all basically pulling, a lot of us are pulling off the same network file server volume. It's telling us that, hey, you know, it's opened by other people. So we should do a save as or something like that to kind of put it on our local drive too, if you want to. So maybe I will do that just so that I have my own local version here. If, since I've opened it here, I'm going to do a save or save as. And just save it so that it's not this version. I can put it out on T. I'm just going to put it on my local drive or on my desktop. I'm going to call it oh, Arc Model. And I'm even, yeah, I'll just save it like that. Just so I have my own copy. Okay, so let's give you a chance to catch up in terms of what's going on. Let me just talk about the model first and really how we're going to approach this. And hopefully, everyone will get up to about the same point as we're working. Okay, so really what we're looking at here is a model of the building. It's a little three-story building that has, oh, it was designed around the notion of kind of having some retail space down at the bottom with a little bit of office space up top, a conference room, some things like that. It's a little model. I'd say this is kind of, what is it? It's, it's kind of a fairly, mm, it's kind of like level 400 or so. It's, it's developed. It's not fully developed in terms of the construction documents and things like that. But there's a little bit of work that went into it. It's more than just sort of a preliminary design right now. And soon, you'll all sort of have models like this. You'll be creating models like this of your building. Yeah. In terms of thinking about it as a BIM model or as a building model, there's some kind of interesting things to note about it. It really is a 3D model of the building. And we can kind of rotate around, take a look at it from different perspectives. Okay. As we're looking at the building, though, all the different objects in the model uh, contain information about uh, their properties. There's a big database. I think Bertrand talked about a lot of this last week. There's a database of information behind each of the different objects. So for example, if I choose the roof, it'll highlight and you'll see there'll be information, or in that case, it was the fascia of the roof, like a wall over there. You'll pick up some information about the wall. You'll find out what type they are, and just properties that just describe that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this over to the side just so I can sort of separate the properties palette from the list of the different views in the model. But you'll see that for every different object there, there's a set of properties to it that describe it. So it has a type. It has things to talk about where it starts, where it finishes. And you'll get to all the specifics of that. You'll learn all these kind of things about how to model a building like this. And we'll do some of that a little bit later in class. But for right now, it's just sort of important to understand it's a big 3D model of the building. But the important thing to think about relative to this model is that in this model, we can use it to go through and generate all the different views. So one thing that's very big within the whole BIM modeling notion is that you no longer are drafting different views. You're not drafting a floor plan. You're not drafting a series of elevations where you have to coordinate those things from different perspectives. You're really just using the model to generate those things. And each of those different views are just a camera placed in the model that's either projecting to the side or projecting down. It's just cutting through the model and showing you things. So for example, if I go to the first floor plan view, you'll see that I actually do have, let me kind of zoom into a region, the model right there. 
There's nothing about that model that was drafted that was all done just by creating the 3D model. And I can even go through and do things. Let me tile the windows together. That might be a useful thing to do. I'll go to the view and tile. You can sort of see there's the 3D model. There's the 2D version of it over there. And if I do things like, oh, for example, select that wall, yeah, you'll notice the mall actually highlights really in a number of views right now. Now I got a lot of information about that object. I sort of see it in 3D. It's highlighted in blue in the 2D okay. view. Okay. It's okay. highlighted over here in the properties palette. So those are all three different views of information in the model. Well, and that's okay. what we want. It's really that you're going to be okay. placing 3D objects representing the building elements. And then from that, this database of information is available. And you really, you won't be doing drafting. You're going to be just sort of creating buildings out of building blocks and tying them together to go through and create all the views you need. Just a clarification. In your midterm assignment description, I have a list of things, plan, first floor plan, second floor plan, elevation, and such. So you understand that they're all going to come off of the model like you see in Glenn's uh, screen now. So you don't have to draw plans or elevations. Yeah. So let me just try to illustrate that in a very simple model. This one's a little developed right now. I'm just going to start a new model in, just to kind of give you that same sense. I'll start it with the architectural template. And don't worry, we'll do this together a little bit later. But for example, if I take walls as elements and I give them properties, for example, they're going to go from the first up to the second level, which is a very common way to define them. And I place some walls. What's happening is I'm placing them in 2D. Um, looks like I'm drawing a floor plan, but it's actually creating 3D objects. And that's the beauty of this whole system. So if I look at the 3D view, and I can look at that, oh, the easiest way to create the default 3D view is there's actually a little house guy, which creates the default 3D view. And I can even tile those windows together. Let me say window tile. Let me kind of hide some of these other ones. We're going to open that floor plan up again, and I'll tile those. You'll see that I've got, oh, this little 2D object. I've got this 3D object. It's the same model. And as I go through and do things like add doors or windows to it, maybe in 2D I'll add the windows, you'll see they're appearing in the 3D window. Okay, so. I have 2D views and 3D views, because it's really just different camera shots of the same model working together. But it's also elevations are coming out of it. So there's the elevation. Again, I can tile those together. So really get used to the notion of you're creating 3D models of all the building elements, and the views are just falling out of those. And the really nice thing about this sort of system, and really where the power of BIM is that's really so radically changed the industry, is that if we go through and make a change in any of the views, if anyone on the project team decides that this model, this window needs to change to be something else and changes it, it's immediately changed in the elevations and the plans. Everyone immediately gets that same information. So we're always working on a common understanding. And that's really, you know, if you think about the one thing that changed building modeling more than any, or building process more than anything without BIM, it was this notion that we all could share information, have immediate access to the same information, because then, as a collaborative team, as opposed to, I put like another my drawings, I send you a copy, you go in through comparing your old version to my new version, you try and find the changes and figure out what changed so you can update your copy of it. Now, we're just really all working off the same live model. So collaboration's really at the heart of this. And that's why we want to show you several different ways to go ahead and do that. That's really the power of this. So, Models exist. We go through and uh, use them to generate all these views. But as Virgin said, you won't actually be going through and creating. Can open up this one. You know those views as drawing views. You're going to be creating models and working from them. So just to get you started, and we'll talk about you know lots of things in terms of the specifics of how to create a model like this. You'll be doing things like this as you go. What I want to start with is actually kind of the notion of how you share things. Given that someone has created a model like this, of these are all the architecture elements, how we sort of get all these things together. Because as a team, we almost need to you know, put that, oh, it's kind of chicken and egg. But we're going to go ahead and sort of think about what the process is going to be and then start building elements that will fit within that process. Okay. So for sharing these things, here's how it basically works. It's very uncommon that in any project, there's a single person who does everything, who does all the architectural, who does the structural, who does the mechanical. 
It's very, very uncommon. Almost always we're on a team. We have a lot of people either in our own office or maybe we're working with uh, consultants and designers in other offices. We have to get all our information together. We need a way to kind of share the information between different people. Because you know, any project of reasonable size has that. So in terms of sharing that information, there's two big strategies we could often use to kind of sort that out and how we're going to share. Let me give you the high level and we'll sort of look at each of the two different strategies and how you implement them. One is, okay, if I'm working in my office and I'm working on a specific aspect, I'm working on the architectural design, okay, and you're working in your office and you're working on the structural design and you're working on the foundations in another office, okay, it's okay, we can all work on these things independently. We don't exactly have a live connection to each other because we're in separate places, maybe separate times and parts of the world, and our internet connectivity may not be good enough that we can actually just directly work on the same thing. But that's okay. You can work on your part, I can work on my part, and you know, at the end of every day, you check in, you just basically put your files in some sort of place on a file server or in the cloud, and I link to your files. I want to be able to see your files, I want to be able to see the information and use it, okay, but I'm just linking to it. Now, the reason for doing that and why it's very commonly used in industry is that as the architect, I'm responsible for a certain aspect of the building, your aspect for, you know, responsible for a very different aspect, and you are for a third. So actually, although I am working with the architecture, as a you know, professional, you probably don't want me in there changing your structure around. You want to share with me, you want to kind of make your information available to me, but you know, since you're responsible for it, you may not have complete trust that I should be able to change anything you've done. You really want to have that degree of independence. So file linking has that, yeah, that, that fundamental notion behind it. It's really, we can share and look at each other's things, but I can kind of see but not touch. Okay, and that's actually useful. So in a lot of firm or a lot of projects, we set it up that way, and it really does two things. It A, lets you not have to be on the same file server all the time, and B, it lets you sort of maintain that independence and protect your data. Okay, the cool news is, as we go through and do that, Every time you post something new to the file server, and then I pick up the latest copy, I can see your work inside my work. It's almost like having alternate universes that sort of merge on top of each other. Okay, and that's okay, we can do that. And we'll show you how to do that in just a second. The second way we're gonna talk about it, which is the more integral way is, hey, we're in the same office, and we're on the same local area network, and we're gonna work very, very fluidly. So not at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to be changing some things, you're going to be changing some things, you're going to be changing some things, and just through the day, you know, I'm going to do a few little things and kind of update the model, you're going to do a few things and update the model. We're going to have a really kind of close collaboration. And that's called sharing the model, work sharing. We're actually working with the same model file that's out there on the file server, and just very fluidly, like almost on an object-by-object -object basis, we're able to share it, as opposed to on a file-by-file basis. Okay. Cool thing about that is very quick, very dynamic. As soon as I put something, check back in, you see it immediately. Okay. Hard part about that is twofold. A, we have to really be on a good network so that we're all kind of connected all the time and really can share a single database of objects. Okay. And B, you know, you can change my objects, you can touch my objects. And depending upon whether I want that, whether I really trust you or not, you know, it's the different levels of degree of control in terms of doing that. So we'll look at those two independently. First we're gonna do linking and then we'll do full sharing. So and then you can we can think about really which is gonna work best for your team. Make sense? Okay, that's the big overview. So shall we? Please. Okay. <laughs> and in the past teams chose to link or use a central file. So both works, work, but you have to understand your team's limitations or some technical limitations, what you want to do. So as a team, I want you guys to come together and decide on a method and use that method. This, the, I think central file is pretty fun, uh, but as uh, Glenn said, you have to have a good network connectivity and you have to be okay with each other touching the same objects and making changes, which is nice. As long as you have your team procedures in place, this shouldn't be a problem, okay? Okay, so let's talk about this. Someone's created this fantastic, well, not so fantastic, it's, it's an okay model. It's an architectural model, it's not too bad. It illustrates our points, it'll serve for today. 
I say that just in case there's any architects in the room who might have a higher aesthetic sensibility than this, because it's OK. It's a functional model. We are going to try opening another model. This is the architect's model. Let's go ahead. We're going to open up what the structural engineer did. So we'll open same sort of way. I will go out to that T drive. Actually, are you all connected to the network now? Yes. Fantastic. Right. So it was really just you have to do the what restart. We still lost one. Oh. Let's go out and get the structural. I was excited. Five, it, we were close. Yeah. Are, we, are we all but one? That's pretty good as a batting average goes. No, two. Two? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's faltering. Try the restart in the background quietly. I don't know. We'll see. Let's open up the structural engineer's work and see what that looks like. So believe it or not, when it does open, I'll believe it then. And trust me, probably setting up your method, linking or central file, is probably going to be the most difficult part of your project. Exactly. Once we get you past that, the rest of it's actually pretty easy. Yes. It's really all this infrastructure to get you going. Seems simple, but it takes time. And depending on your computer's network, how you decide to do it, there are difficulties around it. OK. I'm opening it up. Are you able to open the structures? Are you, are you having better luck getting this open? I'm like, it's, it's being really slow. I suspect it has to do something with the network speed. But like, how are you guys doing in terms of, are you looking at a structural model? Let's see what you guys are looking at. Hey, if you can, OK, some people have the structural model open. I see it open on several computers. So Maybe. What's going on with my instructor computer? It's kind of slow today. Maybe because they're, we're all opening at the same time. Again. It's, that's what I'm sort of wondering. Ah, there we go. OK, I'm going to open the file. So let's talk about what I have here. Again, I'm going to go to that little 3D view, and we'll just take a look. This is a model of the structure behind the building. So we can take a look at it. It's all the beams and the columns and the footings and things. We're going to talk about how we go through and create something like this more next week. We're going to go through and build a structure for your building inside the architecture. But that is, someone created this separate structural model, OK, and it's hanging around out here. As you're looking at it, you can again see that it has all these plans. It has a framing plan for the first floor. It has a framing plan for the second floor. You know, it actually shares some things in common with an architectural model. You might notice there's these grid lines that are hanging around. And that's actually sort of a very important thing. That's kind of a shared feature that both the models have. There's this notion that there's this A, B, C lines and one, two, three. Four. And that's actually helping us coordinate between the two models, make sure everything's in the same place. That grid is actually something we're going to share. We'll show you how to do that. But we've got this arc, uh, the structural model. Someone's been working on this. It's looking pretty good right now. Go ahead and actually let's close that up right now. And we're going to link it up in a very special way. I'm going to close the structural model, all the windows, so we only have the architectural model open. Because when we are linking to people's files, we can only do it sort of one way. You can only touch the file one way. You either have it open for editing, okay, or you can link it through so you're doing that look but don't touch. But you can't actually have it both ways. So if we try to link to something that you already have open, it'll complain at you. It'll say, nope, you can't do it both ways. So go ahead and close the structural model. So just look at the architectural model. And we will link that structural model to it. And it's actually pretty straightforward. It's all based on the coordinates of the model. Every model has some notion of the x, y, z coordinates of every element. And most of these models have a shared 0, 0, 0 point, a shared origin between them all, because we sort of set them up that way. So if we link them together, origin to origin, hopefully everything will line up out of the two different models. Okay, And that's the idea. And we'll show you how to do that later. So I'm going to say it's actually insert, which is where my linking happens. I can link to a model. So again, this will work if the model's closed right now. I'm going to grab that structural model, and I'm going to link to it. But before I link to it, let me kind of point out one very important space. And one thing, it's they the thing that gets changed. It? It's, it's, I don't know if it'll ever change. Let's talk about this right here. You have the choice of how you link them together. Do you want it to be center to center, origin to origin, by shared coordinates? A lot of choices here. OK, let's talk about them. Center to center is, if you could think of the center of the spatial volume of one and the center of the spatial volume of the other, kind of matching those two points up. 
it'll sometimes work the first time, but what tends to happen is as soon as you start doing anything that extends the boundary out just a little further, the center point shifts. Okay, so it really quickly gets out of sync. So center to center is actually, it's kind of a horrible choice. It's really, you know, don't use center to center. It's, it's just not a good choice for what you want to be doing. The one that you really want to be using nine times, maybe 99 out of 100 times is origin to origin. Because that says, you've got a zero, 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 you've got a zero, zero, zero. Let's get them together and keep them together. So always origin to origin. So, Slow down, because about half the times I go whipping through this so quickly I miss it. But see if you can do the origin to origin, because that's always it. And if you link them and they're not origin to origin and you realize it's bad, do not panic. We will unlink and relink them back to origin to origin. Okay, so you can always unlink and relink them, but origin to origin, your best friend. Do that and things will stay in sync with each other. Now, at some point during the process, I guarantee you that at least one person in this room will link them together, not origin to origin, and will do center to center because they went by really fast, okay? And you'll panic and say, oh my God, it's a hopeless mess that the columns are hanging out over here and the building's over here, and again, don't worry. I got some very specific instructions about how you fix it. You kind of stand on your head and you spin around to the right three times and you throw salt over your shoulder and it somehow fixes itself. But we got a five-step procedure that'll fix it. But, you know, just you be ready for it. It'll, it'll happen to someone, but again, my, I say don't panic a lot because there's always a way out. Okay, so I'll say origin to origin. Choose my structural model. Say okay. And an incredibly unexciting like event, um, the structural model is actually inside there. You may wonder if it's in there. I can actually tell it is because the little footings are kind of poking around underneath the building right now. I can sort of see them in there. Okay. But if you'd like to kind of see it a little more dynamically, I've got a special view just for you that might help out. It's called 3D section. It's kind of a cool view. You'll learn to love views like this. This is the kind of view where you can kind of set up the building. Let me even kind of oh, turn off the shadows and stuff so it's a little bit easier for you to see. Or with this around a little bit. It's kind of a 3D section view. The 3D section view is kind of nice because it's the 3D model, but it almost has like section planes so you can kind of cut through and see the structural elements. So in this, I'm not sure if you can see. Let me zoom in a lot more closely and see if I can make that clear. That there's the architectural elements like the ceilings and the walls, and there's these little structural elements, like these little beams that are kind of hanging around there, little beams in the floor and stuff like that. And this is the idea. You really want to be able to kind of get all of these different things together and see them as a single model. Now, when you're linking to the model, let's talk about what you can and can't do. Okay, you're in the architectural model, and you're linking to the structural model. Let's try that first. Okay, the architect can open and change anything in the architectural model. The structural elements kind of see but can't touch. You see but can't change it. Okay, so if you want to change, what do you got to do? You got to say, hey, Mr. Structural Engineer, I need you to change something for me. And if you decide to or not, you make those changes, you give them back to me. And that's the way we like it in industry, because then the structural engineer controls his design, I control my design. We sort of play well together, but I can't change your things. Because I trust you, but not that much. <laughs> it's like that. OK, so it's somewhere between. OK, so if you're looking at the architectural model and you're sort of playing around, if I try to touch the structural elements, you're going to learn there's this whole thing about clicking on things or even tabbing to select things. Let me try tabbing to select that. You'll see I can select it but it's all grayed out over here. I can't really change anything over here. And you might wonder why. And it's because of that see but don't, or you know, see but don't touch. It's that thing. You can look but don't touch. So that sort of happens. That's the only sort of trade off in this linking of the models. When you want to do things to other folks as models, you have to kind of get them to do it for you and then reshare it. Okay? So honestly, that's the big point about linking. Linking is fairly easy to do. It's all this thing of origin to origin. Let me kind of show you in the same sort of sense, you could link in multiple different files because here I sort of, I've divided my work on this one. The architect had some work, the structural engineer had some work, but it could have been the architect did some work, the 
The person who did the structural framing did some work. The uh, geotechnical engineer did the foundation work. Maybe someone else did the site work and the driveways and the sidewalks and the grading. I can actually link as many files as I want to together. And in a big project, you'll have you know, tens and twenties of files all linked together at different times. Okay, so linking sort of a very useful thing. The other thing that's really, really good about linking that people like about it from an industry standpoint is this. Okay. If you go to the Manage tab and say you want to kind of manage the links, you have the ability to turn on and off linked files at different times. We'll talk about why that's useful. Okay. On our little project, it doesn't really matter so much. Hopefully your machine has enough memory. It's kind of okay. You're working on some 100-story tower, okay, it's a lot of elements in all those floors. It really may be more information that you need to work with right now, because you're working on floor two, you don't need to see what's happening on floor 98 right now. And having that loaded into your memory just slows everything. When, when you try to orbit, it goes so slow to redraw it. And if you try to like do anything, it's kind of slower than it wants to be. So if you can do at any point is say, you know, I want to be linked to the structural, that's cool, but let me do something called unloading it. What does unloading it do? It says, hey, I maintain the connection, I still want the positional information, I want to be able to bring you back in at some time, but just don't clutter up my memory right now. Okay, I'll turn you back on, I'll turn you off, just as I need you. Kind of a nice way to have a relationship. It's like, why do you want it? But not other times. So you can do that. And also, if you want to, if you decide you no longer want to have a relationship with the structural model, this is how you ditch them. You hit the remove button, and that's the last you see of them. But you can invite like, relationship ever. Exactly. <laughs> you don't have to text them. It's oh, yeah. so nice. You know, but you can always reload them later. So go ahead and think about how you want to work together. You know, but linking, it's it's kind of a nice, it's a nice relationship. It's kind of lightweight in terms of how it works. It's you know, we don't. We have some independence from each other. How it actually works is when you bring open the model, it'll open up all the linked models and pull in the information at the point you know, where you open the model. So I'm opening at 4 o'clock. It'll pull in the latest version that's been out and put out on the file server at 4 o'clock. Okay. So at 4.30, if the structural engineer has gone off and made some changes, I always want you, you're my structural and you're my geo. We're going to stick with this. Okay. He's made some changes, he saved them, but I haven't opened and re or closed and reopened my file here. It won't yet pick up his changes because it only picks them up at the time you open your file. Okay, so that definitely works out pretty good. You know, we're kind of working separately. I don't need you every 15 minutes, something like that. Okay, but if I do want to go That's ahead personal. and reload a file just right now without having to close my file and reopen it, just reload will do that. Okay, so you can sort of, within this dialog, remove things, link things in, kind of refresh them if you need to, and it works out pretty well. So just applying the same principle, let me do the same thing I'm going to actually link in. Let me go ahead and over to the Insert tab, and we will link in, and link in the MEP model. Okay, that's a model that has a little bit of a, uh, duct work, it has some plumbing work, things like that. Now, for your project, you're going to be given the MEP model. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. so you wouldn't have to worry about modeling this. You're just going to link it in there. Okay, but not so fast. Always remember to do this one origin to origin. Say OK. Okay, and again, it'll be in the model. You don't see it very well. It's actually kind of up on the third floor over there. Let's see if I can find it for you. Orbit this around a little bit. You see some duct work over there? It's over on the, kind of up in that range. Let me turn off the shadows. There's the duct work and stuff like that. And hopefully, we start getting all this stuff coordinated between all the different models. So it's quite okay for you to work on things semi-independently and bring them back together. But to make that happen successfully, we're gonna teach you how to basically set up grids and a framework so you're all working on the same basic framework and foundation and adding your elements to it so they'll actually merge up nicely. Yes? So the, the network that you have to have to make these files doesn't have to be 
a temporary driver we just created or can you oh, cloud? Exactly. That's the beauty of this one. Yeah, perfect question. Perfect question. The beauty of this system is it can be on the cloud. It could be. I could email you the files and count on that. If you have Dropbox or Box or any of those kind of services, you can put them all there. So a really good way is for your team to share a Dropbox folder, to share a box volume, whatever it is, and just put them up there in the cloud. Okay, and then you know it'll sync quietly in the background to your machine, and it'll refresh whatever you open. And we'll give you the instructions uh, to how to set up the Dropbox for this purpose. Go ahead and actually yeah. prepare them. Yeah, we, we can actually use Dropbox to support both things, which is kind of a trick. But in the classic sense, Dropbox is perfect for this. Our project team could have a volume. You can work in one part, I can work in another part, and Dropbox will keep us in sync. Okay. Yes? What will happen is, as your counterpart working somewhere else is saving things, it'll Dropbox will sync it so it'll show up on your hard disk, but it won't actually load it into your project until you either reopen or you do that reload thing. It's, it does it at that time. Okay, but Dropbox is good, it just kind of works in the background. Yeah. Um, when you link the project, yes. what does it bring in? I mean, it brings in the, the model and the properties probably. Yes. Um, but does it, does it bring in the, the views or, like his no. views? No. Is that well? He has like a shot. Yeah. Because I noticed when you open the store, yeah. there were like a lot of views. It's, here they're all gone. They, they don't normally show up here. There's kind of a way I can kind of get to them by doing some tunneling, but they aren't there by default. No, you're correct. So the structural views pretty much exist in the structural model. It's easier for you to for us right now just to think of it that way, that you don't bring in the views. Okay. Okay. But there's kind of an easy way you can copy and paste views between things. So it's just for coordination. I mean, at the yes. end, he has to get out his own drawings, like his structure. Oh, yes. Drawing. Yeah. This is just for... Yeah. Yeah, bringing exactly. everything together. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you reference to another model, right? I mean, so this is for referencing and linking everything yeah. together. It's not one perfect model. It's just linked models. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're using the, the other one as yeah. a reference. And in your case, since you're three people in each group, and we have only two disciplines, you. Yeah. The third one is free. No, I'm lying. Uh, what you have to do is you have to coordinate uh, and divide the project in a way. So, so what some teams have done is like one person does one side of the they they divide the building into blocks. So one person does architectural of the this block, and then the other person does structural of that block. So you're going to have at least three different linked files if you choose to use the linking files method. Okay. But in that case, you also have to come together as a team to decide what element belongs to which model. And this is going to, sorry. Oh, no, sure. Go ahead, question? Just to ask about what you yes. Saying, yes, yes. If somebody did like have the architecture and the other person didn't have the architecture, is there a different method than linking? Because linking, mm -hmm. you're not really combining the model. You're just like looking at, it's like x roughing in the mm -hmm. model. Yeah. That's a very good analogy. Yeah. There is there is like another way to bring the two where yeah. you make it like one model. Sure. Well, we could talk about that because even as part of this, yeah, it's it's a good question. Yeah, linking sort of keeps it as a separate X ref. There's this whole way of, for people who are from the AutoCAD world, just uh, external reference. Um, we can actually sort of merge in a linked model if we actually did want to unify them at some point into a single model. Okay, or we could sort of actually use the work sharing method too. But kind of even following up on your question over here, although the structural engineer sort of owns that, typically the structural engineer will print out his own structural drawings, he'll stamp them and do all those sorts of things. But since the elements are now visible in my architectural model, I can create views that actually feature all those things. So you'll see the structural elements in the sections. I could create my own framing plan I probably wouldn't. I'd probably let you have your framing plan and let that be the one that stands. But I can create views that use all those different elements. Okay. But and if we really need to, there's a way to share his views, and we can kind of get into that too. But for the, that'll complicate things for today. Okay. So yes. How the views are protected by on the structure one is that how 
and that's play with my mother. It, it really just won't let him. You can see them, but you can't actually, it just won't let him change anything. So I am what I create. And then... Yes. If, if he's linking to it, he can't change it. If, you, if he is opening it, then he could change it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's really, it's at that level. I think he demonstrated a minute. Do you want to show it sure. again? Like, yeah. Selecting the beam and everything was uh, grayed out in the model. So let me see if I can get, a, get to a good view where you can sort of see it. So even in here, oh, that's the section box. Let me turn that off because that's just going to confuse you. The section box, this is just this thing that lets me, and you'll learn to sort of love to play with this thing. It lets me cut sections through the building very, very quickly. But let me turn that off right now just so we're not looking at it. It'll kind of confuse the issue. Okay, there's the whole building. So there's actually two models at work here right now, although it looks like I unloaded the structure. Let me go ahead and load it back in again. I'll go back to manage. I can tell because there's no uh, Footing. footings underneath it, which makes me wonder. Oh, it's not loaded. Let me load it in there. Reload. Okay. So watch what happens. When I try to touch, ah, this giant blue box comes around, and it just won't let me touch. So I can't touch the structure. If I try to touch the structure, what you can even sort of see is if I, I can get the whole thing as an object. But you'll see as I hover over it, that little balloon pops up that tells us it's the linked model instead. So, and and that's, what, that's what I mean, sort of looking but not touching. I can get in there if I really want to sort of see what the behavior is or, or the properties of that are. I can use the tab key to, again, select it, but I can't change it. Okay, and, and that's just really the, So it's got a grayed out in the property palette over on the uh, left-hand side. Okay, so linking is actually a really good way for people to get started when you want to work separately or relatively separately. Ask some more questions, and then we'll, we'll break for a little bit. Yes. Uh, it seems kind of tough to match anything in terms of you know, height and whatever. Yes. So I was wondering, is there, uh, does sync on its own and understand like where it is it possible to? to we won't talk about that actually. That's the third thing we'll do today. So if we set it up for yourself, we'll talk about how there's some things like the levels. And these grid lines that we use to align things that we actually do want to kind of connect them in a way that's a little bit tighter so that if anything changes, the other people are notified about it. So we'll learn to start thinking about it as a way of coordinating those level lines between the floor levels and these grid lines to be the X, Y horizontal locations. Those will really be the key to keeping us all coordinated. And there's a way to link those things together so that if anyone changes, someone else finds out about it. And this is how we should start. We should start with the grids and the levels and share them. So, so that's what we're going to do as the third part of today. Okay. So how about this? Because you know we kind of uh, what are three thirty now? Can we, can we take like a five minute break for them and just kind of get up and stretch, get some water, and come on back? Yes, yes, of course. You know, how about that? Go ahead, stand up and stretch because we were here kind of fussing around with the network and all that type of stuff for quite a while. But again, try to come back in about five minutes, and when we do come back. We'll explore the second way, which is this work sharing, okay, and then go into really how we're going to set this up or how I'd recommend setting it up on your own model.